please have your seats. Thank you so much. I want us to share the word of God this morning by, the, by God's grace. We thank God so much for enabling us. My theme this day is the city gate. Tell your neighbor the city gate. Tell your neighbor the city gate. And please just declare, I am a city gate. I will tell you in, uh, briefly uh, about that. But tell your neighbor, I am a city gate. Praise the name of Jesus. I know we realize that God has really been faithful. And there are blessings that God has blessed you that you could not have imagined that through you those blessings will have come to your way. Let's open the book of Genesis 22 verses 18. Genesis 22 and verses 18. My theme is the city gate and I am a city gate. I am a city gate. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, and please uh, mark this word, and through your offspring, praise the Lord. This is Abraham. God is speaking to Abraham and telling Abraham, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. And through your offspring, in other words, God had to find a man called Abraham and told Abraham, Abraham, through your offspring, I am going to do what? Offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. And the Bible says, because you have obeyed me. Hallelujah. Now, God was looking for a man who will walk in obedience. A man who will walk in faith. And he found Abraham and told Abraham, through your offspring. Now, Abraham was a city gate. And that's why when God looked at Abraham's family, he could not find anyone else suitable to carry this blessing other than Abraham. So Abraham became a city gate. God could see a man who was ready for a mission. Praise the Lord. Abraham was ready for this assignment. He was ready to be called by God. And that's why his response was yes. Praise the name of Jesus. And Abraham is told you'll be the father of nations. Even though you don't have your own children, but I proclaim to you, you'll be the father of nations. Hallelujah. Already Abraham could not doubt God because already God has already located a man to be a get. Hallelujah. In the month of July going forward, God is looking for men who he can sign and tell them you are going to be blessed through your generation. Through you, many people will come to Jesus. Through you, many people will receive me. Through you, many people will be opened up. Their lives will be delivered because you have adhered to my call. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, what is a gate? A gate is a doorway. Anyone who wants to come through this church has to pass through the gate. Otherwise, if they jump somewhere else, it will be trespass. So a gate is a way to access. A gate is a doorway. A gate is a place where you have to be allowed in to enter. So a gate is a place where you do what? Break through. Hallelujah. So Abraham was a gate and that's why God looked at Abraham and said, Abraham, I have looked at you. You look like a good gate. You look like a city gate. And that's why through you, I am going to open other doors for you. Some people only receive your blessing because you have adhered. And that's why I began telling you, some people will get tired by clapping. When tell clap, some will still continue because until you say them stop. But some will still what? Will stop doing it immediately. God calls Abraham. And Abraham, because he understands what he's saying, he is very patient enough to understand whatever God has begun in my life, he will surely come to accomplish it in the name of Jesus. And so some people have had the call of God, but they have not adhered to this call. They have not been patient enough, and they have not perceived this call to be able to solidify this call in their life. That God's solid foundation cannot be shaken. Praise the Lord. Yani, uh, foundation in Nguzo. Pastor Joshua, foundation. Msingi. Msingi. 
And so God looked at Abraham and saw msingi ambao hawezi tingizika. Na akasema ya kwamba maana msingi wangu ndani yako hautingiziki. Nitakufanya baba wa mataifa ya kwamba kupitia kwako. Praise the Lord. Kupitia kwa Abraham baraka za wajukuu, baraka za watoto wake zitakuja kupitia kwa huyu Abraham. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so Abraham hears God. And even though he's an old man and he could not get children, he still understands that whatever God has begun, he shall surely accomplish it. What I need to understand is the call of God. Once I hear the call of God and believe in him and have faith in him, and he's not told me you'll be the father of nation, I shall not doubt anything whatsoever. Hallelujah. Bible says, nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm. Bible says sealed with inscription. The Lord knows those who are his. And everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from what? Hallelujah. God's solid foundation. Some foundations have been shaken. Some foundations are in ruins. Some foundations are not almost almost breaking because you have waited on the Lord. You have not seen his blessing, but God said, I have selected you. You are a city. You are a gate. Through you, many people will be blessed. But we keep doubting the fact that God has called us. Hallelujah. Abraham never asked God, you know, Mungu, what are you trying to say? God, surely, you must be joking. How can you tell me a father of nations and even my own child I don't have? Hallelujah. Even my own offspring, I have not even seen them yet. But you're telling them, you're telling me through my praise the Lord. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Bible says, and through you, what happens? I we just read Genesis 22, verses 18. Through your offspring, but I don't have my child of my own. Praise the Lord. How is that possible? God, through my offspring. How will it be possible? How am I going to call on my generation and tell my generation, you know what? God is going to bless you. But I don't even have a generation yet. I don't have anything. I mean, Lord, you are saying it, but I can't see it. But it took a man of faith to understand when God says through me, already it has been designed, it has been selected, it is ready. God has sealed this foundation. And therefore, I will not be shaken. Some people are shaken. But the Lord spoke a while ago and said, you know what? I will bless you. Men of God spoke to you and told you what? God is talking about this. But you keep doubting yourself. You keep getting worried. You keep being anxious. But the Lord has said, through your offspring, the child is not here yet. Same to Abraham. The child was not there yet. But God says, your offspring, your offspring. I have already seen the end from the beginning. You may not have seen this by physical eyes, but if you believe the word of God, if you believe what I am saying, then you will see these offsprings. Then you'll be able to perceive in the spirit what I am talking about. I am engaging in this because I know you are a man on a mission. You are a man who is going to bless nations. And that's why I begin now. Praise the name of Jesus. God wanted to see the faith of this man. He never doubted and asked God, God, which offspring? Some of you say, you know what? You'll get a husband. Which husband? You will get a child. Which child? All these years, you will be employed. Which employment? After all this hustle and struggle. But God says, you are a city gate. This man was a city gate. And God saw from this man, I am locating a blessing that will not just be for him, but for generations to come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Revelation 22 and verses 14. Revelation 22 verses 14. The Bible engages us in this word. Remember we're talking about the city gate. A gate is a sign of authority. Praise the Lord. A gate is a sign of authority. The Bible says, Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Praise the Lord. You can never go to the city unless you go through the gate. And therefore, the city has a connection to the gate. Every city you enter, you must have 
the documents rightful to be able to do what? Pass through. You cannot enter that gate unless you have a document, really, that's showing that you have been given access. And therefore, the Bible says, those who want to access this city gate, one thing, blessed are those who wash their robes. Hallelujah. Bible is talking about holiness. That only those who are going to wash their robes, those who are going to seek the Lord from their heart, those who are going to abide by the laws of God, those who are going to hide in a secret place, the Bible says that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Praise the Lord. Ask your neighbor, are you a city gate? Ask another neighbor, are you a city gate? Hallelujah. The way to the city gate is through holiness. God demands us to be holy as he is holy. And that's why he says you want to go to the city, one reason that you should be able to, one area that you should look unto is to wash your robes. If your robes are not clean, there's no access. If your robes are not washed, there's no access. If you are not clean, there's no what? Access. That's why when you go to the border, you'll be asked about access. How do you want to get here? Who asked you to come? Do you have the documents? Because there's another city that you're going to enter. Praise the name of Jesus. One time I was going to Uganda and I got to the border. And when I got to the border, I had not taken the yellow fever. So when you get to the border, you, there's a stop, a stop over there. So you stop, you alight, and they give you some few minutes. Do what? Yeah, to go to the restrooms and then you proceed with the journey. So, uh, when we were at the border, they started checking our documents. Now, the bus goes, you are left at the border, the bus goes past the border, and then, of course, everyone has to be checked. So, we started being, of course, there's a queue. You have to hurry so that you don't have to uh, be left with the bus. So I went to the queue. But I go to the queue. When I got to the uh, officer who was checking the documents, I realized I didn't have my yellow fever. So the officer told me, there's no way you'll go through this unless you have the yellow fever. I told him I actually didn't know that. That was my first time to travel to Uganda. I actually thought, as long as I have my ID, you know Uganda and Kenya, you know Sutin Marafiki. Praise the Lord. Yes, we are friends, isn't you? East Africa, you know, and all that. And even though we are friends with these nations which are bordering Kenya, there is still access needed. But this was first sana. So I was asked, you have to get a yellow fever. So I asked them, How, what can I do now? They told, me, they told me, you have to go to the office and you have to get the yellow fever so that you can do what? Pass. One gentleman told me, you know, I can do it for you very fast. I give you the card without you going through there. I told them now, if this is realized, this man is talking to me, by the, but where will you get the stamp? There's supposed to be a stamp there to show that I have been done what? Injected. And I have the right access to this nation. So I thought this one will be a problem. I went to the office. Told me, told me you have to pay 2,000 shillings. I didn't have the 2,000 shillings. And I thought to myself, the money I have is only limited for me to go to Uganda and come back. But I had no shortcut. There was no what. I had to get the yellow fever. I had to pay. I had to go through injection for me to do what. By the time I was going to the queue, everyone in our bus had already left. It was only remaining about five minutes. And remember, this is another country already. There's a problem with the network and all that. But God is faithful. I went uh, through the office and uh, through the officer who was checking and I got the access. What am I trying to say? Without access, without the right documents, without the right, you know, uh, 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 documents and papers, there is no way you will access that nation. In other words, God is saying, you want to enter the city. Some of you are gates in your own lives. But because of the burdens you carry and the challenges you face, you have seen it that it is too much for you to bear that burden. When God calls one a gate, there are reasons why God wants to be a gate. Praise the Lord. 
Some of you are doubting why is it that every time I'm asked for money? Why is it that every time I'm the only one who is being called for meetings? Why am I the only one in the family being sent for burdens and issues? Because you're a city. Because you're a gate. When the gate gets tired, no access, nothing will happen. When there's no soldier here to open, people will stand at the gate and no one will get access. Some of you have stopped at the gate and you can't enter to the city. Because you got tired already. You got tired of waiting. You got tired of carrying the burdens. You got tired of walking the distance. And therefore, you cannot even access this city gate. Because already there are burdens and luggages that you are carrying in your back. Every family has a gate. Every man in a family will find men and women who are gates in this family. These men carry burdens of family. Praise the Lord. Ask yourself why every time you're the one being called. Every time you're the one being asked for reasons. You're told, please tell advisors on this area. Please tell us about this issue. Please tell us about this issue. Please do you know whether someone is sick. What can we do? There is someone admitted. What can we do? There is someone who's going out of the country. What can we do? We have an issue about money. What can we do? Because you are a gate. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We look at men. Who are ready to go through this challenge and be able to, through them, God can be able to bless their generation. Some of you guys are sitting on the blessings of your family. You are sitting on the blessing of your family because you're really tired of every burden and luggage being brought to you. Every time it is a call. Some of the calls, you even ignore them because you are tired already. Every time your sister is calling you. Every time your brother is calling you. Every time you're the one being called for, for this issue. There is a problem in the family that this girl who is not going to school, please help us. Even though the parents are there, they still call you. Are you getting my point? They still call you, please, at Pastor Joshua. Please advise us. What can we do about this? You may not even have the money that is needed to do all those assignments, but you are still being called. Who do you think you are? You are a city. And this city requires a gate. And this gate to penetrate through requires a man who is going to say, Lord, even though I have not seen the possession in the city, I will still go through the gate. I will still endure the pain of the gate. I will still endure the burdens of the gate for me to access to the city. Praise the Lord. Bonesha was a sana. Ask yourself why everyone coming from the village, they have to come to your house. Ask yourself why every time there is a problem, you must find yourself as the chairman in that committee. Ask yourself why you are the only one being called and told someone is unwell. Some of them they could pray, but they say we have to wait for this man to arrive. Unless he comes, nothing is happening. Unless he comes, even burial cannot be administered because that man has not arrived. That woman has not come yet. She must give us some suggestions. There is something she carries. There is something he carries that is able to give access. And one word from you only gives access. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Are you a city gate? Ask yourself, am I a city gate? Begin to look at your life currently now. Every time things happen, you have to be at the center of them. Whether good or bad, you carry those luggage and you have to do what? Endure them. And sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you speak words. If Abraham who spoke these words, we will not have the blessing we are enjoying today. Abraham was a gate. And we honor this man because he asked and he adhered the call of God. He was ready to go through every kind of pain. He went through every kind of shame of no child. Until the right time came. After endurance of the pain of the gate, Abraham was blessed with a son. The Bible says at the old age, even though the Wife was still doubting. The Bible says God blessed Abraham with a child. He went through the pain, the shame, but he still held on the words of God. The word of God is final. But that was the first time. The word of God is final. If witchcraft is existing in your family and you are the gate, who is going to take away that witchcraft? It is you. Because you are get, 
That's why people do things at the end of the day still ask you, you know what? Our family is suffering. What can we do? Our family is in the problems. What can we do? We are still having this issue. What can we do? Now, we need to look at what will this man who is going to lead people to the city do for them to access this? Everything is on your shoulder. And you're wondering, God, how will I carry this? I have school fees issue for three children carrying on my shoulder, including your own. I have this issue that I'm carrying on my shoulder because of these children who have no jobs and they call me. You have CVs in your, in, in your WhatsApp. You have CVs in your email. You don't know what to do. You've sent them places and they're still calling you auntie. What is their progress? Uncle, what is the progress? Please tell me what is happening. Please, please, please. And you're wondering how will I even manage all these things? How? One man, one woman standing as the gate. They have to get access. Today in the name of Jesus, we are calling on you and saying, Father, give us access. Father, give us access. Father, give us access. We will not stand at the gate anymore. We want access in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The way to the city demands holiness. The Bible says that the Lord is holy. We ought to be holy. The Bible talks about in the book of 1 Peter 1, 15 to 16. 1 Peter 1, 15 to 16. Are we there? But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. 16. The Bible says, For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. And, 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 and uh, you know, Sammy says this, Search me, God. Search me, God, and know my heart. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my uh, uh, anxious thoughts. See if those, uh, see if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Praise the Lord. Psalms 139, verses 23 to 24. Now, that is the prayer of a man who wants access. Because if the Lord will not search your heart, if the Lord will not be able to open things in your life, if you do not go back to God in repentance and tell God, God, I want this access. How will I get these keys? Because everything seems to be stuck, including your own. Because when you are a city gate, you don't tell people your problems. Some of you here, you cannot even afford to speak about your problems in the family because you are a social provider. How will a social provider ask to be helped? When you realize these mysteries, you will know why you are going through some things. And why you have to endure and seek God. And tell God, the only thing I need now is not complaining or grumbling or arguing is I need access. I just need the keys. When these keys open, you tell your grandchild, please come, there's a door here. Another door is here because you are a gate. Gates have multiple doors. When you enter through this gate, you can access the washroom. You can access the office. You can access the tent. You can access the church. You can access even the instruments. You have access to everywhere. There are multiple doors released to you the moment you access the gate. And that's why once you have this access, everything begins to open up. Everything begins to work. Everything begins to shine. Because you have access to the gate that you've been looking for. Years and years you've been asking God, what is happening to me? What is happening to our family? There is a gate that has been released to you that you have to access. Lead people to the city. Praise the Lord. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Anxiety comes in when troubles are in your way. Anxiety comes in when you are thinking about the things which are happening in your life. And you don't know what way. How will I do this? God reminds us that I will only search God. When I search you, Father, I will find solutions. When I search you, King of glory, I will find solutions. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No wonder you cannot afford to speak anything negative. Whatever you speak is taken as gospel truth. If you say from now henceforth, we are tired as a family. Let us uh, uh, search for this other solution. Everyone follows that direction. Because a gate has spoken. A gate has given instructions. You say, you know what? You know my siblings, we have been struggling because of this. Why can't we sell this land? And that is how they take it. No one argues about it. You are a gate. 
whether they direct people in the right way or in the wrong ways. But sometimes we get stagnant on the same place and don't know how to have solutions. God is calling us this morning and says what? When you, I have called you and I told you that you are mine and some people are still struggling. That is why some people are struggling in your family because of salvation. Who is the gate in this house? You are the gate. Who is the gate in this family? You are the gate. Bring salvation. Call on God because of your brothers. Friends, we have to get to some place where we have to get tired of some things. It is not funny when your, your brothers and sisters are walking on the road, drunk, in the village, and you are still saying you serve a mighty God. It is not funny when everyone is unemployed in your family, and you are the only one who is employed. Since you are a gate, please have access to other people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is not funny that everyone in the family is not married. You're the only one who is married. And you're still wondering, you know how, you know how, and talk about them. It is not about how anymore. It is about you. The Lord has released an access in your life. Marriage came through your door. And that's why God is still telling you, you know what? Will you open your eyes and see? Like the way I spoke to Abraham and told Abraham, you are a gate, Abraham. Through you, your offspring and your descendants will be blessed. Through you because you are a gate, men will come to you because of advice. Praise the Lord. At the gate, men sit at the gate and make decisions. At the gate is where every decision is made. In the times, you know, in the, in the old days, when you go to the barazas where Wazes are sitting, whatever they discuss and agree, it is the final. Nothing else. Even if you come to beg, even the, you know, the government will listen to that. What did this Wazes say? They agreed. Because they were the men at the city gate. Bonaeswa sifiwe. Bonaeswa sifiwe. In this country, we have a gate. You can't access Kenya through your own ways. You access this country through a gate. The president of this country, even though you will speak things from your bedroom, unless he says he has given access, it remains to be your own words. Even though you go to the roads and say this, unless he gives direction, it remains that way. He is the gate in the country. He remains with the authority. That's why he began by saying, those who are gates have authority. The moment they say, now from now henceforth, the price of Unga is 500. You cannot argue. You'll talk about it. You'll grumble. You'll do it, but you'll go to the shops, find 500, you have to buy. That's an order. It's a direction. You can't beat him. First of all, he's the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. So he's guarded. You can't even have access to him. Number two, he has authority as the president and he has been given the right by the constitution to give direction for the country. Anyone who is coming to the country must go through status first. Ask yourself why every time when presidents come, the first stop, where is the first stop over? Where is the first stop over? State house. They have to get authority from the highest office in the land. Tell them welcome to the land. Welcome to this place. For now, we are going to go with you. I'll give you my men. They'll take you around. You can access the city. You can go to the national uh, you know, park. You can go to this place. You can visit any county. Now, because you have access. Because this man is a gate. Because through him, men can have access. Through him, anything is possible in the country. If the president allows bad things to happen, they will happen. If allows good things to happen, they will happen because he's a gate. Praise the Lord. No wonder what he says becomes almost the truth. You find everything that he says, it is watched. Every word he mentions, every single word he says, everyone is listening. Millions of millions of people are listening. When he says, you know from now, we have this problem and we have to adhere to this and that. Some will oppose. Some will hear. But at the end of the day, we have to adhere to that word. Because the top man in the land has spoken. Now, you are a gate in this family. You have to guide this family in the right direction. Times to grumble and speak about, you know, even avoiding. Sometimes, you know, we have issues about our family until we avoid them. You even avoid calls. You block your own family members. But you don't realize that you have to do something in this family to stop what is happening now. 
You can't be happy and saying, you know, I'm just born again. You know what? Uh, as long as I am, it, you know, life belongs to me. But God has given men like Abraham access to nations, access to his offspring. And that's why I realize this. When Abraham thought about childlessness in that time, Isaac could not fight that anymore. When time came for Isaac to get married to Rebecca, the Bible says Isaac only spoke a word and the womb of Rebecca opened up. Praise the Lord. There was already access because he fought the battle of childlessness in the family. God had said already through your offspring, I have already blessed it. There is no barrenness in this family. There is no ease in this family. I have blessed this generation already. So the enemy tried to deceive Isaac. You know, Sasa, but Isaac was careful to note that the fight my father fought in that time has already been fought already. I can't fight that battle anymore. I am a conqueror. He spoke a word and the blessing of the offspring, the blessing of the descendants came upon Isaac and a word only came. What happened? Not even one child. Two children came. Are you getting my point? Hallelujah. Total surrender is required for those men who want to be gates. Total surrender. Abraham almost looked like a fool. He had to surrender before Jesus and that's why he took every instruction. Total surrender to Yahweh has to be realized if you want to be this gate we're talking about. Gate that leads to the city. Bible says holiness is key. Number two, Surrender to Jesus Christ all the days of your life. Humility. You can't pride yourself when things are not going right. You have to humble yourself. The Bible says, you know what? Get to the secret place. When you go to the secret place, you seek God, God will be able to hear your prayers. The Bible says, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you have done what? Received. And it shall be yours. Another point about gates. Gates must pay a price. All gates must pay a price. Did Abraham pay a price? Did he pay a price? No. Can, you, can we preach together? Did he pay a price? He came from a family full of idols. But this man, he forfeited all kinds of idols in the family and stood the test of time and went through all this and through every shame and became a gate. And today we can talk about the offspring. We can talk about the blessings of Abraham. We can talk about the seed of Abraham. Because the man paid a price. Isaiah 119. The Bible says what? Isaiah 119. Isaiah 119. The Bible says. If you are willing and obedient. Look at the word obedient. Did Ab was Abraham obedient? Was he willing? Bible says, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. It begins by willingness and taking up, not arguing, not trying to think hard about it. You have to will. The will is there. There is obedience. And say, now from now henceforth, I take my family before the throne of grace. Lord, I will cry before you because of my family. We have battles to fight. But only battles fought in the secret place will be able to get victory. Talking about all these things will not help. You can imagine even having meetings with your friends and telling them how stubborn your sister is. How stubborn your brother is. How stubborn you know your family has become. How stubborn your mother. Ask yourself why the, your mother calls you the first person telling you, you know what daughter, I, have, I am sick. You know what, daughter? I have no money. You know what, daughter? I am going through this issue. Why are you the one to be called first? Some of, even, some of your siblings, they hear from you. Are we together? I hope someone is getting this word this morning. Some people get information from you. Hello? You are not even aware about it. You are going about your business as usual. The way you are striking deals out there. You are doing, you are meeting your friends out there. You are doing things. But there is a gate that you are ignoring of your parents 
who have access, there is a gate you should not ignore. Parents are gates. When you receive from your parents, it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. That's why the man called Isaac, who was a gate, called on the blessing. And he said, I want to bless my son. Yes, Esau was the one who speaks the blessing. But Jacob realized one thing, which Esau forgot. And you know what? When the father calls for a blessing, I have to be alert. Because this calls for my destiny. This is what will shape my destiny and my future. The father has called for blessing. And Jacob quickly goes and grabs this blessing as per the book of Genesis. And this man receives the blessing. And when a son comes and says, don't you even have one blessing? Just one. Just one. Father, please. Just one. He said, already a son, you belong to the earth. You belong to the world. There's nothing I can do. I have released it already. I have released gates one son called Jacob. Genesis 28. The Bible says what? Verse 1. Are we there? Twenty-eight, verse 1. So Isaac called for please listen here. Isaac called for who? And did what? Then he commanded him, do not marry a Canaanite woman. Let's look at this verse. So there's a man who was received this blessing. But Esau still calls on the father and says, Father, don't you have any blessing left just for me? I know you've already done that. It is okay. I have lost it. But Lord, but my father, please. Now this time, Esau is beginning to understand something has been released. And whatever has been re 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 released, it's already beyond me. But he's asking the father. In the Bible, to talk about this, in the book of uh, Genesis 27, verses 38. Esau said to his father, you can write this down, Genesis 27 and verses 38. Esau said to his father, do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. It was painful because the gates have been released already. Hallelujah. That was the end of Esau. That was the end. Don't joke with gates, friends. When God has selected you and given you priority in your family, don't joke about it. Take it seriously. Take it seriously. Run with it. When your parents are calling you for consultation, take it seriously. They are gates. That's why this man of this blessing, the same thing that happened to his father, Jacob called his sons and blessed them. It is a generational thing. It cuts across to the very end. Hallelujah. We should understand God has put gates in different people. It might not be everyone. Maybe even this word is not for everyone. But it's for those men and women who are saying, why am I enduring the pain of the family? Why am I enduring the pain of my business? Why am I the only one who is suffering the pain of my department? Because you are a gate. When the gates close, that is the end of that business. When the gates close, that's the end of that family. That's why brothers were fighting Joseph. They didn't know that Joseph was a gate. Hello. Praise the Lord. Families who are here and your, your, well, maybe your sibling is doing well. He's helping you. Don't fight him. Because that is the man who God has placed the star. We talk about Nyota and joke about Nyota. The stars are real. God places stars in people's lives. And the truth is, when this star locates you, nothing will be able to stand against you. Because now, you become a blessing. No wonder you are called for the only money left to do things. You find yourself, yes, as much as you are struggling to give it out, you just say, let me give it out. And you give it out because you are a city gate. God replenishes for you and gives you. You find 10 men calling you in a day. Do you have 2K? Do you have 1K? Sometimes, you know what? We ignore and say, you know, I can't be the one who is, who is uh, uh, I'm not a bank. Mimi is central bank. That's how we say. Eh? Kila saa. Mnanipigia simu. Eh? Kwa ni mimi ni central bank. Hallelujah. But you are a gate. 
gate receives everyone, including the madman. Hallelujah. Gate receives anyone. That's why your house cannot be afford to be closed. Unapika chakula ya family yako. Afu nasema unajua what? Nimechoka kila saku host watu. Even hosting fellowship has become a problem. Because you are tired of cooking tea. You are tired of cooking bread. I mean buying bread. You are tired of feeding men. Don't you remember that you are a gate? If Abraham would have closed this gate and say, God, I am tired. You are sending me here and there telling me to do this and that. I am tired. That is how all our blessings will have been shut. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Get the deeper realm of the spirit and understand why are things happening in your life. Not everything is to be cast out. Not everything is just to be looked at and ignore everything. Understand why is God taking through this path. Abraham went through a test. And that test when he passed the exam, this man became a blessing. He spoke generation. Nothing was missing, including getting a city in heaven. He became a blessing here on the earth and became a blessing in heaven. That's why when you go to heaven, we find the city of Abraham. Hallelujah. The man was a gate. The man was a gate that gets you to the city. And that city, he actually multiplied. He actually spoke blessing with the faith. The man carried the same favor and the same anointing even to the heavens. That's how Jacob stole away the blessings of Esau. Because where Kilasari could argue to. The mom says, you know what? I want 10,000 for fertilizer. Only. You will cry the whole month. Some of you, your parents are suffering in the village. And you are here enjoying KFC. And you know, showing off on media. How you are enjoying things. And there is a problem. When that gate disappears and shifts someone else, you will regret the whole of your life. But this was for Sana. I hope we can get this gospel and understand it well. Because the moment this happens and understand this, you will be locating blessings. Because a gate is a pathway. Everything passes through you. The good and the bad. Because you're the shrine provider. Tell this friend, you know what? Come, we pray. Come, we pray. Come. Come, we seek this. Come, let's go with you. When someone looks at the family, they only see one person. When they look at the posts in the family group, Unless someone posts, come out your post, nothing will happen until you post. Who are you? Hallelujah. Who are you? You go to the family gathering. Everyone talks. But unless you talk, there's no conversation there. There's no meeting. There's a problem. They even call you five calls, five missed calls. Where on a meeting, on a zoom meeting, on a wapi. Where are you? Why are you not picking calls? Why are you not getting to the meeting? We want to discuss some things. You are a gate. People argue so much in the group. Happen argue, there's no solution. When you arrive, Sheikh Alabagada, you provide one solution, everything changes. You say one word and everything takes shape. You say, No, family, this is the way to go. Everyone says yes. That is a word, and we have to follow because you are a gate. Gates have access. One word God gives you, it heals the family. One word God gives you, it heals your business. Praise the Lord. This week, no, uh, this month, no, last month, this is a new month, last month, month of June, early in the month, uh, begin, uh, not early, in mid of the month, I was called by my MD and told me, you have been doing well, yes, but knowing as a leader, you also need to do something in terms of supporting, in terms of, you know, bringing in, I lead a team, and this team has been doing very well. But I told me, one, we have given you something to also support this team. Why is it not coming? I told them, but I am meeting my numbers in the team. Everything is okay. He said, yes, that's fine. But you have to do what? Do something for us to see. One person, you know what? Even that one business you bring, or something you bring in the table, what are you bringing on the table, will be able to multiply the rest. I argued about it, and I didn't understand what he was saying. But I came to realize one thing. God, when I bring that seed on the table, the seeds multiply. When I bring that thing on the table, the rest will multiply. And I understood one thing. This month, I went and brought seeds. For sure, my numbers have tripled. I closed the month of June with 140% of my production. Hallelujah. 
Praise the name of Jesus. I understood one thing. God was saying something. That unless, yes, you are saying, yes, come, come and bring this. But unless you bring something on the table to be a seed, nothing will happen. And that's why every decision has made in the family or any place we are. Please, have a seat there. You don't have millions of shillings. You can give someone 1K. They say, I have a trouble in my business. I am going through this issue. Do something. And you say, you know what? Money don't I have, like Peter and John. Let's not be those Christians. A Christian prays and supports. Hallelujah. One amen is enough. I'll continue. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Believers, you pray and support. We want to stand against this. You know, praying is good. But a seed has left on the table. Because that man needs food. They won't go and, 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 and after prayer, what will they eat? They are believing God for something will happen. But your seed carries power. Whatever portion you have, know that whatever you give is a substance. And it has a lot of weight. Pray for that person. Tell him, you know what? I won't have everything, but take these 500 shillings to go to bless you. That person lives there. The next day, they have 5,000 from somewhere. You don't know where. Because you are a gate. Praise the Lord. You are a gate. You just gave access. But a prayer alone may not really help. That's why this man was a place called the beautiful gate. He suffered for years, not understanding what to do. He was at the gate of the synagogue. He was at the gate of the synagogue to enter in his possession, to enter and receive from God. The Bible says Peter and John used to come there to offer prayers. People will get well. People will be prayed for and they receive salvation and receive healing. But this man was at the gate for all those years. And nothing was happening in his life. We can't be standing at the gate, looking at the gate called beautiful. It baffles me to see a gate called beautiful and you're suffering. Hallelujah. My goodness. You can't be called grace. And there's no grace in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm, no, no offense when anyone called grace. I am... I'm just sharing the word of God. I'm talking about the oracles. Even time seems, every time you're being called for and you need to provide, you shouldn't provide, and every time you have nothing to offer, tell God, God, pour ideas in my life. Pour wisdom in my life. Because I am carrying a generation. Because I am carrying a nation. Some of you guys carry the gates, blessing possessions for your families and for your businesses. That's why when you say a comment, everyone says, we like that point. Someone let's say said you, you keep quiet and no offense though, but probably there's just something that has come to someone and everyone follows. And someone says, and you know what? We argue, argue, but says the ideas were given last week in our meeting. They bore fruits. When we went to the station, something happened, and we received this business. We received this deal. We received this contact. Something happened. When I went to the business, you might find one day. One day I went to a business, and uh, I wanted to buy what? Uh, uh, kamande. Hi, here in Umoja. I went to buy Kamande and Ndengu. And I, I was just passing, and I saw Ndengu. I was like, I need Ndengu and see those in the house. So I went in. When I walked in, I was talking to that mama and she was telling me, you know, I'll, I'll do this, I'll even discount for you. And I looked around and even saw some, uh, you know, uh, wheat flour and all that. So I did some small shopping. And the place didn't have any customer, for sure. And after I bought, I even told them, can you discount for me? She was very graceful to discount for me. And she discounted for me. I got a discount. The moment I was just leaving, five people were queuing behind me. And I just wondered, where the people came from? How did they come to this shop and I came here alone? In fact, after long 10 minutes, I was just there alone. I was being packed for. I was everything. I got a very good service because I was the only one. You know when you're so many, services become a bit. Hallelujah. But when you are alone, you know, everyone serves you. Have you ever gone to a salon, uh, ladies? The, you're the only customer. Everyone comes to you, gives you a drink. You get a juice. What else do you want? You get access. Everything, everything. But when a ten of you, even if you speak on that point, no one is listening. Because others need services as well. Praise the Lord. Five people came and bought. And I was asking myself, eh, where did these customers come from? And the Holy Spirit was quickening me. The moment you give a seed somewhere, you might be just buying, but you don't know the people. The Bible says what? You know what? The blessings of the Lord make rich. 
they make rich. In other words, you carry the weight of that blessing. And once the blessing comes unto you, they follow, even the surrounding. You come to a house, you just went there to visit with a shopping, small shopping, just came to visit your brother. And before you know it, another sister is calling you. No, go happy. From nowhere, all the family members are gathered there. Have you ever seen that? That you are a gate. Praise the Lord. But you know, um, the moment you realize that you are a gate leading the city, you begin to do things differently. Gates have to pay a price. Praise the Lord. Gates are authority. And that's why the Bible talks about this in the book of Luke 1 and verses 10. You are the authority God has given your family. You stand at the gate and whatever you say, it is, comes to materialize. The Bible says it's Luke 1 10. And when the time for the burning, no. That is Luke. Let's go to Luke 1 19. Sorry. 19. 19. Go to verse 19. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I've been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you'll be silent. No. I'm looking for the word that says, Behold, I have given you authority. It should be in the book of Luke. 10.19. Thank you. Hallelujah. Those are Bible readers. 10.19. I have given you what? To trample on what? And what? And to have overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you because you are a gate. I have given you authority. No one receives authority unless they have been located, selected, go through the process. The president of this country went through election. He won the election. He had to go through vetting. And everyone said, you know what? He qualifies. Is he above this age? Yes. Has he, has, has he have a degree? Yes. Has he done this? Yes. There was every selection. The moment you qualify for that, the Bible says now, now that you have met all qualification, I have therefore given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you in the name of Jesus. Why are things harming you? Because you're not, you're not a gate. You still don't believe you're a gate. Why are things coming to you in flood? Because you don't believe you're a gate. You still doubt yourself. God has given you authority, but you play around with the authority. Imagine the president right now is given authority and just says, you know what? I am helpless. You know what? What will we do? You know what? It's okay. You know, please help me. Where will the authority come from? He has to stand and say, what? We're tired of this. I therefore give instruction from today henceforth that the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, I am giving authority to go forth for the enemies and attack them. The next day, people get to work. Praise the Lord. But why are we suffering? Because already the enemy has realized the man who was appointed as the city gate is already tired. The man who was appointed as the city gate is already uh, 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 faint. This man was given the responsibility already has no faith. I believe believe Elisha Kitambo. You begin struggling at your workplace. You begin struggling in your family. You begin struggling the things because you realize your powers have been taken away. Slowly by slowly. Hallelujah. That's why this verse can only make sense to people who understand that they are authorities. Because when they stand on that gap, they take it fully and acquire it. Recently, an, another young man at work came to sit next to me. He had been promoted from an officer to a manager. And when he came, he was given uh, a seat next to me. When he came there, he sat at the edge of the seat. He sat at the edge of the seat and was looking Oh, at the direction where he came from. You know where you, you move from that desk and then you come to somewhere else. So he was looking at that place. Sitting at the edge. This is a big seat. He's been given access. He's been given a desk. The desk is a very big desk because now you've been appoint appointed. You, are, you have been promoted. A big desk. Then he was given a laptop. He was using the desktop before. Now he's been given a laptop. He's been given a big desk. He's been given a good chair. But the man is still sitting the same way he was sitting as an officer. Hallelujah. So I asked him, gentlemen, please, Take ownership of this seat. It is yours already. Sit properly. Move your seat close to your desk nicely. You have been given access. Take the rightful authority of this assignment you've been given and walk with it because already every sign is clear. You have the papers. You have the contract. Your salary has been increased. What are you waiting for? Take access. 
take authority, ownership. Now, some people are like that. You're still sitting on the edge. And still asking, tutafanya, tutafanyaje, tutafanyaje, hata misi juu yaki. Some of the languages we speak has denied us access to some things. Hallelujah. We will speak like careless people who don't understand who we are. When you understand who you are, even your language will change. We said, oh, no, oh, oh, oh. no, guys, listen. There is God in heaven. Whatever this trouble is, that's why this man came and said, there's a trouble in the land. Elisha, oh, there's trouble. There, there's an issue about the water. Don't worry. Don't worry. He took the salt, poured in the water, and immediately the water became fit for drinking. Solution providers, authorities, gates speak like that. Hallelujah. Are you again in this house? He spoke to the water and the water listened. It is here authority. I can't. Demons hear authority. When authorities speak, there they cannot even behave anymore. But you know someone says, talker, I talk. Someone says, hey, authority, yako, Pana. Then it's, uh, uksha shout, but I built out of salt in Meisha. Umeza kumepanguza jasho kidogo. Mwana, ay. Kuna pasi hote hapa karibu. Authority may shaft lie away. Eh? I'm not to be a pastor. I'm not to be a nanny. So you estate. Eh? Pastor has to fly, uh, has to come drive for 10 kilometers to come and take. But your authority, speak to that issue. Speak to it as an authority. As a, you are a governing authority of Jesus Christ. All rights have been given to you. The Bible says what? And these signs will accompany you as a gate. Hallelujah. Get believe, he said, I, if you believe and have faith, all these signs, signs are company. Signs don't have to come. Hey, number miracles. Number the No, Bible says they will accompany you. Are you getting my point? They will follow you. For those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. Hallelujah. They shall speak in new tongues. That's how gates behave. Praise the Lord. When you are a gate, signs follow you. So no joy, you are praying God to have the power to have signs and miracles and wonders and all that. No, that's why we don't pay for miracles. Because already they follow us. When they realize this is a gate here, say this one I, can't, I have no choice, I have to follow. When you are saying the name of Jesus Christ, is there a problem in your stomach? Get well now. Pain disappears because a gate has spoken. Because authority has been released from you. The powers given and those signs that are accompanying you, powers coupled together, make the sick man well. Because you are a gate. A city gate. Leading to the city. When the gates open, there's access. But today we have to open the gates. Gates of marriage have to be opened. Release them. Gates of joblessness have to be opened. Imagine job have been released to you already. But you machine you okay? doubt yourself. Nani kena ni anguke your interview. Usha fail. Don't even go. Hello? Don't even attempt to go. You failed from the word go. That's why the blind man, Jesus Christ, listen this. Jesus Christ told this blind man, go and do what? Wash yourself in Siloam. Praise the Lord. How did this man walk to Siloam? He was blind. Hello? How? When Jesus said, go and wash yourself, at that point, he opened his blindness and he began to see. So this was just a formality. Let me just go and wash myself. Are you not getting that point? He was says, go and wash yourself. Go and you shall become this blessing. So this man goes and washes himself. And now physically you can see, but he began seeing at the point where he said, go. Go. That was it. Daughter, go. Your sins have been forgiven. You are, a, you are blessed. But you keep doubting the, the idols in the family. Keep doubting the witchcraft in the family. Keep doubting the issues about the family. Go there and speak what? Chukuyo mchanga ya nyumbani and speak to it because he gonna eh, let me tell you in the spiritual realms everything has ears and they can hear. Even this seat. Hallelujah. The rocks can hear. They tremble at the name of Jesus. And therefore you have power. 
Speak to it and say, you soil, that you have been accustomed to this family and to this home. Today we denounce you and we speak unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall produce. You shall, you shall, we shall develop. Some of you think just need your prayers. Now you are troubled. You are troubled. You are just thinking about the demons who might be doing things in your home. Will you call the family and tell God, God, we as a family today, sometimes even fellowship don't happen in your homes because someone has lost their focus. Someone is not doing their job. Mwenda familia ni sherehe tu. Kusherekea, ukula, na mepiga photos and that is it. Was there a prayer? People go back and then after two weeks, unaza kuwa na kitu kama 3K hapo. Ama katuke. But you are celebrating. That's the time before celebration began. Shall God, God, poverty that has held us for years, today, as a gate in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak against it. It will not have any way anymore. The gates are open. Now, that is a blessing forever. But you cannot be looking at things happening and you are a gate and still sit there. Praise the Lord. My time is up. Many people are gates, but they have not come to this reality as the enemy has deceived them. Gates break through. Gates give access. Gates are possession and are seats of authority. Walk in the light of the Lord. The Bible says what? Let's open the book of Matthew 5.14. I'll say two things and then we, we close this uh, as we pray. Matthew 5.14. Are you the gate of the city? Are you the, are you the gate in the name of Jesus Christ? Okay, the yeses have it. Matthew 5.14 You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Praise the Lord. Give me a version that says about city. Should be, is it King James? A city built. Hallelujah. Thank you. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Continue. The Bible says nor do men light a lamp and put it under a peck, measure, but on lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. Are you a city on a hill? Praise the Lord. When you're a city on a hill, you light up. God calls us a city. You know, sometimes you still wonder if this city, is it a town, is it? City represents you and I. It represents us as a child of God. It represents the household of believers. That you understand what? I am a gate. And this gate leads to a city. And therefore, when I'm a city, I sit on a hill. When I'm on a hill, I light up the entire place. When I am a city on a hill, what happens in that hill? It lights up the entire town. There is no darkness anymore. You receive the light of God. You receive salvation. You receive abundance. You receive joy. Things begin opening up. Praise the Lord. Some of you have to buy cars for cars to come to your home. Some of you have to get married for marriage to come to your house. Some of you have to open business for business to come to you because you are a gate. Hallelujah. The gates are still stagnant waiting for no one. You are what God has designed you to be. Praise Jesus Christ. Ah. Joseph was headed by his brothers. He was the gate to their destiny. But they didn't perceive it. David was turning after a sheep as Samuel was looking for the next king. Look at that. The man who is the gate, he's uh, turning on the sheep, but they're still looking for the king. And even his own father didn't realize that I have a gate in my own family. That is just a young boy there who is turning up the sheep. But that didn't realize that that is the man we are looking for. That man became the gate of the family. Praise the Lord. Aaron and Miriam, look at this. You know, they fought Moses, who was an authority, because he was married to a what? A Kushite. Sometimes this is what happened in our family. Uliwa eh? mkikuyu. Ah. That is where trouble comes in. And everyone begins to speak. And you don't know, that lady in that family has come there as a light of men. In that family. Please be very cautious the things we speak in families. We speak about the two things in church here, but the things we speak in our families are very heavy. Tribalism has hit our family's heart. That's why you have been forced to marry who you married, got married to. Not because you liked, because it's your family choice. They said you have to get married to this person. Did you pray about it? God can perceive it to get a Maasai man. And that Maasai man comes there as a light in that family. 
God can have called a lady from another tribe and come there. Have you realized some, 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 men, some women who got married to your family are the ones who are even shining in that family than even the owners. They brought businesses there. They brought jobs. They want to give you access. They even open a doors for you to get employment and you're still talking. Please, be very cautious. As a family, we were stagnant. One lady came, got married in that home, brought her car. Now everyone is like, to konagari kwa familia yetu. Eh? To akuja kavumua shamba. You know, to konashamba uko transzoia. Now it is yours. But when she was coming, it was like, who you? You try by metoka. One, two, three. You begin speaking like foolish men. Foolish men speak that way. But if you knew what God had done, ah, you will have perceived that from the word go. They come full packaged because God has sent them there for assignment. That's why they come even bring prayers in the homes. They bring fellowships. They bring, you know, they have networks. They connect the families here and there. That's why even you are probably saying, you know, my sister-in-law is a lawyer. Now you can speak about your sister-in-law who is a? My brother-in-law works with treasury. Now you can talk about your brother-in-law who works with treasury. You know my brother who was married to my sister, he is, works with KDF because there was access. A gate came. You didn't know about KDF, did you? Did you know about treasury? Now you can even walk there. Nikapa treasury, guys. Eh? Just hanging out. Eh? Nikona, my sister-in-law. You know, God is good all the time. That gate came because God allowed it to happen. Hold on it and blessings fly in your way. Praise the Lord. I want us to open our mouth right now. Close your eyes and just, uh, just rise up on your feet right now. And just close and tell God, God, I am a city gate. Tell God, God, I want access in my family. I want access, Lord. You have located me as a city gate. Lord, I am tired of just, you know, Lord, arguing and grumbling. I realize that I am gate. And this gate, oh God, wide open to me. Lord, I have, I have lost focus. Because I didn't understand what, who I am. But today, Lord, I understand that I am a gate. I am. I understand that I am a gate. That gates carry possessions. That you go to the nations and receive. Some of you have access to the nations, but you still doubt the fact that uh, you know you failed the first interview. Go for the next interview, and the Lord is going to open your doors. Some of you are still waiting at the door. Open that door. Give access to the room that others may enter. That others may enter. Come on, open your mouth right now and tell Jehovah Father, I pray the name of Jesus. I pray the name of Jesus that I am a gate, that I am a city, that I am a city. The Bible says a city on a hill cannot be hidden, cannot be hidden. Today, I receive the blessing of the city. I receive the blessing of the city. I receive the blessing of the city. I receive the blessing of the city because I know for sure the Lord has blessed me. Like Abraham received the blessing, the blessing of generation. Today I stand at the gate, as a gate to the city. I pray God, may you locate this city. May you locate this door in July in the name of Jesus. I refuse to stagnate anymore because I am a gate. I will get married because I am a gator. I receive my child because I am a gator. I receive no doubt because I am a gator. I receive my blessing because I am a gator. Shikala bagada. Rekosiya bagayande. Zakala bagazagada. Oh, prokosiya bagada. Yetere bagosayande. Lekazakadara bagazaya. Eh, okosiya bagadaya. Child of God, open your mouth now. Open your destiny. Open your destiny. Open your destiny now. Shakala bagada. Yetere bagosa. Pray, 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 pray now. Pray, 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 pray. Look at that gate. Look at that city now.